JEA mains, January 24th, 2023. How is the paper for shift 1? I have a memory based recreation of the paper with me. And it looks like most of the questions, a large proportion of the questions, are just about directly substituting the formulas. So I'd say this is a kind of easy exam uh, going by the standard of the time when I wrote it. But I guess things are getting easy. So uh, in the context of the exams these days, it is moderate to easy. Uh, there are uh, three or four questions that actually require you to think that I have marked out here. Uh, one of these questions, uh, thermodynamics question is when one gram of liquid is converted into a vapor against a given external pressure, it's given that 10% of heat is used to expand the volume by a given amount and is asking the increase in internal energy. So this is a test of your understanding of the first law of thermodynamics. Why uh, keeping in mind uh, what is happening during a phase change? So you see a phase change is occurring here uh, that is accompanied by an expansion and expansion means that work is done by the system. And uh, the work done by the system is uh, 10% uh, of the total heat intake, which means 90% of the heat intake goes into increasing the internal energy. This is the way to do this question. If uh, this, this is one of the few questions that asks you to think, the other being the inclined plane question, uh, where there are two masses uh, on two inclined sides of a single wedge. One side is inclined at 30 and the other side at 6. And these two masses are going to be accelerating along the respective inclines, and the question is the tension in the string is how much. So of course this is straightforward, you just have to draw the force diagram uh, for, the, uh, for the two masses with uh, taking equal tension in the strings because the string is massless uh, and uh, there is a G and G sin theta on both, uh, on both sides. So this is at least something, uh, this is at least a question where you actually have to draw the free body diagram. Apart from that, uh, you have one question where a silly mistake is possible. The weight of an object is 18 newtons, find out its weight at a height 3200 kilometers from the Earth's surface. Now you are not supposed to use the uh, acceleration g change formula or g into 1 minus 2 h by r. You are not supposed to use that because that is only meant for cases where h is much smaller than r. Here h is uh, 3200 kilometers and r is 6400 kilometers. That is not true, uh, h is not much smaller than r. So you will have to directly substitute it into the formula for gravitational expansion that is gm1 into by r square. Uh, there are one or two questions from areas that are absolutely scoring areas but that are generally ignored by students. One of this is from uh, communication systems chapter. A signal of square shape is superimposed with a carrier wave uh, of a given amplitude. And the modulation index is directly formula based. Modulation index is the ratio of modulation wave to the carrier wave. And you get 1 by 2. If you have studied this chapter, which many people try to, uh, many people tend to ignore. Apart from this, we have a radioactive decay question. Uh, this is very straightforward if you remember what happens in an alpha decay, beta decay, and a gamma decay. Uh, there is also a question from dimensional analysis. So always these questions keep appearing. And this really is a topic you are not supposed to ignore. Dimensional analysis is simply to calculate the units of a quantity. Uh, and you can use common formulas like E is equal to H nu, uh, P is equal to MV, common formulas to try to figure out the units of a particular quantity and convert those units to get the quantities representing that units, mass, length, and time. And that gives you the dimensions of the quantity. So, this is a straightforward area, again, possibly unsolved. Uh, apart from this, uh, all the remaining questions are straightforward formula substitutions. You have radius of variation of a solid sphere about an axis that is parallel to its diameter lying outside the sphere. Uh, this is also ICM plus MR square, that is a parallel axis theorem. You have springs in series, uh, there is a direct formula for that. You have the force of repulsion between two infinite current carrying wires. Uh, you have standard series parallel combinations of resistors and you also have the field due to a current carrying loop uh, at any point on its axis. So these are some of the formulas that are involved here, the direct substitution of values or expressions into these formulas. Apart from that you have uh, two or three questions which uh, actually need you to think. Uh, and uh, finally there are two questions from areas that are uh, sort of ignored usually. Uh, and that is my take on this paper.